Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm happy to be connecting with you today on my live stream. Each and every Monday through Thursday, I join you and share with you the wisdom and teachings of Dr. and Master Zhigong Sha. And it's always through, through my flavor, you know, from what I've learned and been able to translate to life. Today, for those that are interested who would like to stick around, I'm going to be talking about the three things that separate us from love, the three keys that we can put into our life to bring love or to find love in our life. And so if that sounds of interest to you, then I think you're going to enjoy this live stream today. Now, one of the things that happens when I uh, decide what to share is I sit and I ask, the same question I say okay heaven what do you want me to talk about today <clears throat> and usually there's a blank and I wait a little while and um, what I'm waiting for is a message I'm waiting for guidance and today it started out with this exact title and so it is how I will be serving you so I wrote down the title and I said okay heaven what are these three uh, three paths these three keys and they told me exactly what they were instantly. I said, oh, pff, of course. This is like a, of course, I should know that. Uh, but that's how it goes with these wisdom and teachings. Because it is, the answers are always present. Uh, the answers have already been given uh, to humanity in many, many ways. And in this case, it was given by my teacher, Master Shah. And so it will not be necessarily new information for those that are veterans who are watching. But it will definitely be uh, powerful for anybody who is uh, tuning in for the first couple of times. So if you are interested in clearing the blockages so that you can have love in your life, you will find that the wisdom that I will share today will have a significant impact for you. So I'm grateful for you all joining me. It is April 7, or excuse me, December 7. And as I was musing on today's date, because I'm pretty bad at remembering the date, uh, so just before I started, I said, okay, what's today's date? And as I was musing on that, I said, ah, it's my father's birthday. Now, Dad left the planet about uh, eight or nine years ago, and I'm sure he's having a good time hanging out in heaven. <clears throat> but nevertheless, um, I wanted to send him love. So I did that just before connecting with you. Also, in the state of Hawaii, where I'm at, they, uh, they acknowledge the um, uh, Pearl Harbor Day. And so these have some significant dates associated with it as well. Today, I hope to make it memorable for you and helping you to clear the blockages so that you can have more love in your life. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for hitting the share button, letting other people know about today's live stream. I see some new faces coming in. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Aloha, Ferdy. Aloha and welcome, Gina Vittoria. Welcome, Kristen Strachan. Aloha, Jennifer Crest Smith. And welcome, Larissa. Welcome also, Stephen Buck. And aloha, Lisa Bellavance. Welcome, Sharon Dodd. And Wendy Dijon. Aloha. Welcome, Joy. Aloha, Maria Joy. And welcome also, Kim Morrison. <coughs> aloha, Nicole. And thank you, Joy, for your kind comments. Welcome also to April. Aloha, Chantal. And welcome also to Pamela. Welcome, uh, Kathy Arnold. Aloha, Sharon Argo. And welcome, Shelly Maritza. Welcome, Judy Parker. Aloha, Thweeba. Welcome also to Missy Dodd. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. So as I was preparing for today, I looked through a couple of Master Shah's books, and uh, I may use his newest book uh, to assist with some of the some of the uh, part when we go into the practice itself. So for those that are new, what I do is uh, I I generally just talk for the first five or so minutes and let the people gather, and then I set the energy field. I call forth the beings of light. Um, then what I do is I go into the teaching. Uh, after about 10-15 minutes of that, I do practice. And the practice is what's most important. Uh, you know, it's always nice to hear things that, that rest on our ear well or feel good in our heart, but it's pretty much useless unless we apply. So 
what I will share with you today will of course be of value, but it will be a far greater value if you apply it in your life on a daily basis. And so uh, I, I'm, I forget the paraphrase that Master Shah uh, recently stated at the most recent Belgium retreat. I heard it for the first time last night. And it was something like, power is delivered, but you must still do the human practice. <laughs> and so the power is the wisdom, but you must still apply it to serve you. So welcome Don, welcome Ilona. Uh, thank you all for coming. So let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. If you haven't hit the share button yet, then do so please. Let other people know about this. <clears throat> we have the four powers starting with the, soul, uh, the body power. So it's like a prayer position, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand remains pointed up towards heaven, connecting heaven into our heart center. I will now call forth the beings of light and ask them to serve us as appropriate. So close your eyes and let us connect. Dear our beloved divine Tao Source, our beloved Creator, <clears throat> we love you, we honor you, respect you, and I bow down to you. We ask you to be present at this time. Dear all layers of all heavens, animals, generals, soldiers, leaders, and workers, all heavens, angels, uh, healing angels, archangels, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Masters and Ascended Masters, Gurus, Lama, Sifu, Saints, Beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, Beloved Buddha, Amitofu, Beloved Kuan Yin, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels and saints, we love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you, ask for you to please be present at this time. We ask you to come to sit in each and every one of our heart centers. Please guide the wisdom that I share today. Guide the practices so that each and every soul watching and listening receives the greatest possible benefits. We are extremely grateful for the opportunity to serve and I thank you for your unconditional service and your presence. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls and all universes. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We ask you to please turn on and we invite all souls and all universes to join at this time that as we chant love, peace, and harmony, please assist in aligning humanity heart to heart, soul to soul, releasing negativity, aligning to positivity, and assisting bringing love to the planet. For those that are new just turning in, this is a mantra. It is chanted in over 40 languages. You're welcome to learn more at lovepeaceharmony.org.org. And I encourage you to do so because it could change your life. So I will now chant to offer this service and to align our hearts and souls. And you may close your eyes and make a request. And you may also chant with me. Lula, lula, li. La lula la li, lula lu la li lula, lula ha li lula, lula li lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai tu ran ran li. Wang Ling Rong Her Musher Shang Shuang Ai Ping An He She Shuang Ai Ping An He She I love my heart and soul I love all humanity Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so welcome also to. Don Brown, welcome Ilona, welcome Kathy Arnold, uh, welcome Julia Abbott, welcome also Devorka, welcome to your daughter, welcome Kate, Nicole, Chrissy Kota, uh, welcome Janice Crosby, and Aloha Melissa Corwin, good to see you here Melissa. Uh, welcome Johnny and Pamela, welcome also to Lisa Bellavance, uh, Larissa, I'm not sure if I mentioned you or not, but welcome. 
If you have not already done so, please hit the share button letting other people know about today. The three things that can bring us to love can be viewed in many different ways. What is it that separates us from love? What is it that we need to do to receive love? Why can't we have love? What is love? Am I doing everything necessary or what am I doing that is disallowing me to have it? Am I already on path but worrying too much? Love is not external. The biggest mistake that is made by every soul in humanity that has not discovered love in the way that they would like to have discovered it is that they are trying to fix it from outside of themselves. So the three paths, the three keys, the three wisdoms that separate us from love are directly related to our understandings and perceptions of life. They're directly related to our understandings and acknowledgement of universal laws. Do you think your beloved Creator uh, would not want you to have love? Do you think your beloved Creator is doing things to your current relationships to cause a lack of love? Highly unlikely. <clears throat> your beloved Creator is love. And guess where you came from? So what does that make you? If your beloved Creator is the ultimate and complete love, then it stands to reason that you are too. Because you are birthed from the womb of the Creator, in the Creator's likeness. You carry the same percentage of love that your Creator carries. Why then does it not feel that way? If you recognize the universal law of cause and effect of karma, you can start to understand the nature of why things fill out of balance. When we are birthed, we are created in the likeness of the Creator, given the same power of the Creator. And that includes the ability to create. And at initial creation, billions and billions and billions and billions of years ago, the big boom, whatever you want to call it, when Creator exploded itself, and there were billions of stars, planets, galaxies, universes, and you and I formed when creation was formed. We were infused, imbued with Creator's love and free will. And in that free will, <coughs> we expanded ourselves. A singular thought creates expansion. A singular action <clears throat> creates expansion, not only of you and your soul and your entire collective experience, but of the entire whole. So as you listen, you are thinking. That is literally expanding all universes. It's expanding all creation. Just your thoughts, my thoughts also. Collectively, we are expanding our individual and collective creation, just with a thought, a word, or an action. So from the very beginning, when Creator expanded itself into billions upon billions upon zeros of billions of itself so that it could experience all that it is, you are part of that experience. And with that came the opportunity to uh, create what you wish. <clears throat> Some propagated into uh, more beings. Those are called ancestors. So we have a lineage. We have a mother who has a mother and father. We have a father who has a mother and father. And this goes all the way back to original creation. So way before we came, there was all of them. And they came dun, 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 to us. So we are in a long lineage, a line of original creation. <clears throat> and we may reincarnate to be the grandfather and whatnot. That's certainly possible. But that still means we're part of the, this chain. And from original creation, we had the ability to make choice. And with choice, we can make positive choice or negative choice. Now, 
when the initial positive or negative choice was made, then there was separation from original uh, purity, I guess you could say. Master Shab referred to it as Tao. Tao means oneness, original creation. It's just a word. It's not a religion. Um, and so he would refer to it as the oneness from which everything was originated from. And so heaven and earth, we are in a yin yang world. Yin and yang. You hear that many times in Eastern philosophies. What does that mean? That means the world of polarities, the world of opposites. What does this have to do with love? When we were with original creator, when we were birthed, we carried with us, each and every one of us, that purity of love. There was no need whatsoever to search outside of us to find love. Why? We were it. We knew it. We understood it. No need whatsoever to search outside. But this is what we all do now to try to fulfill love. We go outside of us. So welcome, Blythe Angel, coming in from Scotland. Aloha. Welcome, Michelle. Michelle. Uh, aloha to Becky Lefav. And welcome also, Bonnie Robinson. And so when Creator, when we as aspects of Creator in that perfect place of love made a choice, any choice, that was not selfless, completely selfless and done from a place of love, this created an expansion of our universe and the universe as a whole. And it created an initial separation between creation, original creation, and what is known as the yin-yang world that we live in, the yin-yang world of positive and negative, up and down, hot and cold, man and woman. Positive and negative includes good karma and bad karma. What separates us from love is the lack of recognition of the nature of our original soul that we are already love and we come into this experience, this incarnation, this everything, and we get lost in the sauce of this drama called life on earth, but we fail to recognize the original truth. We do not need to search outside of us for love ever, but we very often do. So how do we get back to having love in our life now that we're pretty much lost in the sauce? It starts with this awareness coming to the forefront and the recognizing that the creation of the yin-yang world is in essence, the creation of polarities, positive and negative polarities, is the creation of yin and yang, is the creation of good karma, bad karma. Different languages, same, same. <clears throat> In the creation process, from our beginning until now, Different people have different beliefs. I'm not here to change your beliefs. It's this is what I'm going to sharing is what what I've come to understand so far. I'm guessing it will change substantially between now and the time I leave this physical world, simply because as long as my mind is open, I will have greater wisdom come to me. But up to my understanding right now, um, we are here to bring ourselves back home, reverse create, if you will. And one of the great things about Master Shah's wisdom and teachings is how do we do reverse creation? We already understand creation. We already understand mind over matter. He has brought the concept of soul over matter, which I'll be moving into with this conversation. But we also have to recognize the nature of universal laws, the law of yin-yang, the law of cause and effect, the law of good karma, bad karma. What you do unto others is brought unto you and so forth. That includes all the wonderful things. Now, this is not new information for a lot of you, but in relation to love, there is a pathway back. There's a pathway to have it in your life. <clears throat> the reason a, uh, a vast majority of us 
are disassociated from that purity of love is because we are disassociated from the truth of our original creation the various dogmas and religious systems want to uh, promote the information that has been spread uh, in such a way to keep us in a place of searching to keep us in a place of needing them or that structure uh, for um, forward movement <clears throat> and it's not always true we can find our own forward movement by going inside and by realigning to our source that's probably not new information to you also so why then don't we do it very very often here's where the rubber hits the road and this is important much of what I'm saying is not new information. Yeah, I know. I understand cause and effect. Yeah, I don't know. I understand good karma, bad karma. Yeah, I believe if we go inside, uh, it'll make a difference and I can find love. Yeah, I know not going outside is not the solution. So it's not that you don't know all this. Why then do we just keep doing the same old things the way we've done? The answer is the negative spiritual debts, the karma. It inhibits us from making the choices that we know are going to assist us moving forward. <laughs> when we acknowledge that anything that jumps into our life, <clears throat> be it an angry spouse or an irritated child or a fender bender or a boss who's a jerk or whatever it might be, whenever one of these negative things enter our life what it has a large effect on us is has an effect on knocking us out of our internal heart it knocks us out of our place of internal uh, love the place where we need to be it takes us from the inside to the outside cell phones do the same thing TV shows do the same thing movies do the same thing all of this takes us out of our inner self where love is and takes us to the outside world wherein we play tennis with the yin yang match of positive and negative energies so some of us love that game of tennis we like playing the game of positive and negativity we like the emotions and that's why some people love the scary movies it's the sway of the emotions from one to the other it gives them a temporary um, uh, reprieve from their suffering um, which is it yanks them out of the suffering and they're, and they're temporarily um, anesthetized and so in order to find love, we have to clear the spiritual debts that bring the negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs to us. We have to clear the spiritual debts that bring those people from the outside of us that keep us in a position where we don't feel like we can find love. And that includes sometimes the, the nagging parents. That includes sometimes the the nagging thoughts where your best friend got married and already has kids and this best friend's uh, uh, and they're and they're nagging on you. Why aren't you married yet? Why don't you have kids yet? Why aren't you in love yet? No, 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 no. If you did what I told you to, da, 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 da. so these are all outside things that don't have a direct relation to you finding love. But what they do is they keep you from going inside. They keep you from aligning to your original source, your original soul, and your creator, where your love already is if original creator was the tank of water and you were in a parched Sahara Desert and you could see this massive tank it wasn't a it wasn't an illusion it's a real tank of water the tap right on it would you therefore give attention to all the people that come up to you on the street saying oh you don't want to go there come here you don't want to go to that tank of water. Come over here. Let me entertain you over here with my video game. Let me entertain you over here with my movie. Let me entertain you over here with my drama. Let me entertain you over here with my gossip. Let me entertain you over here with this negative thought inside your own head. Let me entertain you here with this guilt. These are all the negativity. These are all karmas. Literally, this is negative karma in our face. And because it's so commonplace, we don't even see it as such. We are completely, in most cases, oblivious to it because it's like a fish swimming in the ocean. It does not even know it's being surrounded by water until it comes out and it tries to take a breath and says, hmm, I didn't really like that too much. 
and it comes back in, and it becomes numb, N-U-M-B, becomes numb again. We are numb in many ways, swimming through this life, being surrounded by the spiritual debts that inhibit us from aligning to the love that we all originally are, that we all want, that we all certainly deserve. And when I say we deserve it, some people go, oh no, negative self-talk, that's karma. Spiritual debt and karma does not always have a physical form. It's very important to comprehend this. Spiritual debt and karma can very often have an energetic form that you cannot see. There are other dimensions that we cannot see. And these other dimensions are what angels live in. They're what God and Buddha and Jesus live in. They're higher frequencies, but there are also lower frequencies that we cannot see. And those lower frequency dimensions, there is negative ta 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 So if we or our ancestors, I spoke of that lineage tree back to original creation, if we or our ancestors along this lineage of creation down to where we're at, had created unpleasant conditions, made significant mistakes with others, and cause them to have very unpleasant negative experiences, then these create thought forms. These create negative frequencies, energies that gnaw on our ear, gnaw on our head, create guilt consciousness, create uh, use worthiness consciousness, all of this false stuff that appears real is literally karma. It's literally karma. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. It's important to label it as such because once you can see it, you can then move to the next part of this teaching, which is how to resolve it so that you can have love in your life. But we can't move to the next part of the teaching until you get that the sources of what keeps you from love are coming at you from 360 degrees, some visible, some not visible, and they're all dragging on your attention to keep you away from that which is your original purity. So even though you can see the, ga the, the water tank full of water waiting for you, you can see Christ right in front of you, Jesus, Buddha, you can see God right in front of you, whoever you believe, you can, it's right there. Sometimes we get derailed all over the place, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. We have to be responsible for going inside and disallowing those things coming from the outside to keep us from having the love that we deserve. So now that you have a greater comprehension of how karma can look and how it can show up, some of the originating uh, consciousness of it, how it's connected to our ancestral tree, now the simple solution, which some of you have heard but may not have applied or maybe don't apply every day, but if you did, would make a significant difference. Because how do you offset spiritual debt? You offset it with virtue. You offset it with the application of positive energies and frequencies. You offset spiritual debt by asking for forgiveness. If you stole somebody from somebody, and you are truly authentically sorry about that, you give the something back to that you stole and you say, I deeply, deeply and sincerely apologize for stealing this from you. It was, um, it was inappropriate, it was wrong, and I have learned my lessons. I will not make that same mistake again. If you had this eye-to-eye -eye conversation with somebody after doing that, it's very likely they would forgive you. That would open up your heart, bring more peacefulness. So how do you offset spiritual debt? which are all things negative, thoughts, words, and actions, you offset them with love. You offset them with forgiveness. You offset them with doing good karma things and good service. The three steps that are the most efficient in bringing love into your life are the three forgivenesses. What is the first forgiveness? Aloha and welcome, Gabrielle Leon. Uh, welcome also, Kristen Rojas, and uh, welcome, Melissa Combs. Aloha, Dio. 
And let's see, oh, who else? Aloha, Stephen Buck. Welcome, Pat. Welcome, Tasha James. Might have missed one or two people. Forgive me if I did. And welcome also to Marcia DeForest. The three keys to releasing the blockages that inhibit you from having love in your life are all under the category of forgiveness. I am now going to walk you through a practice for each one of these. This will be a deep practice. Some of you might be too much for you. Just let, sign off. Okay, you know, I don't, forgiveness, I get it. I've been there, done that. Not going to make a difference. But if you do this deep forgiveness practice with me, you will have a template by which if you brought this into your world on a consistent basis, you would, in essence, be pushing aside all those vendors on the street that try to keep you from getting to that water tower. All of the, the, the things that derail you from staying centered in your heart, from staying connected to your source, you would be able to much more readily push them aside and dissolve them, thereby fulfilling your heart, thereby allowing love to come to you instead of searching vigilantly outside of you to find it. It's a lot easier path. It's a lot more effective and it will save you gobs and gobs and gobs of time. But if you prefer doing it the other way, by all means do so. I don't know how it's been working for you. My guess is not that well. So you might want to consider a different path. The wisdom and teachings I'm sharing with you are from my teacher, Master Shaw. So for those that are new, I would recommend this book. It's called Greatest Love. I know it's backwards in the camera. But if you go to uh, Amazon, you type in Greatest Love Master Shaw, which is S-H-A, then it will make a big difference. And Stephen asks, will it help my medium side? The short answer is absolutely. Because the purity of a message is built upon the purity of the heart and the clearing of all things that keep your heart from being impure. So if you do things that clear out blockages of the heart, then absolutely it will improve the ability to receive messages with clarity and accuracy. So let us do this practice together. We place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position, which is a hand mudra position, just like a prayer. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center, right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Let us close our eyes and I will walk you through the three forgivenesses one by one. Now you do not have to repeat all the words that I'll be using. I'm just going to guide you through this and if it feels comfortable, by all means repeat. But the key is as you're repeating to feel it in your heart, to be connected to the words and the emotions and the request. So the first forgiveness is to ask for forgiveness related to love. So close your eyes and let us do this practice together. We're first going to invite in all the beings of light to assist us. So repeat after me, if it is comfortable. Dear our beloved divine creator, my heaven's team guides angels and saints. All the beings of light that have been invited to this practice today. And you can include specific ones if you'd like. I love you, honor you, respect you, deeply appreciate your unconditional service. I ask most humbly for you to please bless these three layers of forgiveness practice that I can open my heart fully to all the love that is possible for me and release the blockages that inhibit me from having the greatest love in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue. Dear the soul of all of my ancestors, please come to this practice and do this practice with me for your actions have created both good karma and bad karma. And as we do this forgiveness together, we have a greater chance of success. So now your ancestors will be doing this practice with you. Continue to repeat. <clears throat> Dear all souls, 
<clears throat> in all lifetime, whether I remember them or not, my lifetime or my ancestors' lifetimes, if we have ever harmed you, especially harmed you in such a way where your heart closed, where you had a lack of love in your life, if I or my ancestors made a mistake, and took another's life, whether it was wartime or not. And as a result, your heart became broken. As a result, you had great emotional suffering. I sincerely, sincerely apologize. If I or my ancestors have ever said unpleasant things about you to others that has caused others to not love you, not accept you, not appreciate you. There is truly no excuse for this kind of communication, and I sincerely apologize. If I have ever made vows of love and broken those vows, I deeply apologize. Dear beloved, my beloved Creator, and all of the beings of light, if I have ever shaken my fist at you, blamed you, separated my heart from you because of a tragic experience that I was unable to understand, if I ever cursed you or created conditions in which my heart closed to your love, I most humbly and most sincerely apologize. There are many, many possible conditions that I may have made some significant mistakes that has caused all of you beautiful souls to close your hearts, to not receive the love you deserved. If I or my ancestors have done anything that has created those kinds of conditions, there is truly no excuse. I can only ask for forgiveness. I know that to ask for forgiveness is not enough. I understand that I must help others to be happier and healthier, to create good karma. But I truly appreciate the opportunity to receive your unconditional forgiveness. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Now open your heart and receive the forgiveness. There are literally thousands of souls that are checking your purity. They're checking is this person sincere? Have they learned their lessons? Do they recognize their actions were quite hurtful? Do they know that that's why it's been so hard for them to have love in their life? They're checking. You go into a pure place. Do a deep forgiveness by yourself for the next minute or so, and I will gently hum a song. You must do this forgiveness by yourself with purity to all the souls. Mm -hmm. 
and now bow your head inside your heart to all of those souls that you and your ancestors may have harmed. Give them your greatest love. Truly be regretful for bringing harm to them. Right now, what is happening is heaven at the level of the Akashic Records for all the souls that have agreed to forgive you, they're literally shining light on the papers of your book where there was darkness, where there was blockages inhibiting you from having love in your life because of this trauma that may have been brought upon others. So many, many of your pages are being cleaned and purified with light virtue because these souls are forgiving you. Now we move into forgiveness number two, offering forgiveness to all the souls that have brought great harm, trauma, suffering, loss of love to you or into your life. Maybe you lost a loved one as a result of a drunk driver, as a result of something completely what you would term stupid. Maybe you have great anger because somebody took, uh, uh, lied and create, caused you to lose your business, therefore your livelihood. Maybe you have great anger because of relationship breakup. It is not matter. Whatever you are holding on to is inhibiting you from having the love that you desire in your life. When you acknowledge the law of cause and effect and the law of karma, you will recognize that nothing happens accidentally. Everything that supposedly happened to you likely had a cause. And very possibly, you or your ancestors created an unpleasant condition that then brought about an unpleasant condition that came to you. So when you offer forgiveness, it is not saying that what these people did to you is okay. It is saying, I recognize the higher perspective of the laws of cause and effect. It's saying that as I offer forgiveness, I am acknowledging that I may have created the conditions that brought this unpleasantness to me. It says that I recognize that as I offer forgiveness, even if I did not ever do anything to these people or persons, that by offering forgiveness, I am keeping them from having unpleasant experience. And since we are all one, we want to all return to the light. This is step number two to opening your heart to love, offering forgiveness. So please do this practice with me. Keep your eyes closed, fully connect. Continue to repeat if it is comfortable. Dear all the souls, in this lifetime and all time, that have ever done anything to create suffering in my life, whether it was on purpose or accidental, if you have ever made vows of love to me, and broken those vows. If you have ever created disruption in relationship that I was in, and it created the breakup of a relationship that I was in love with. If you or your ancestors had ever taken the lives of someone very close to me, a child, a mother, father, a husband, a fiance, and as a result of your mistakes, they lost their life. I wish to forgive each and every one of you unconditionally. I wish to recognize that the laws of cause and effect have a purpose beyond my comprehension and that to hold a grudge against you is actually keeping my heart from being open to receiving love. Continue to repeat. Dear all souls that have ever spoken negatively to me or about me, causing me to feel angry, 
if you have ever gossiped about me, if you have ever said unpleasant things about my relationships or the romantic relationships I have ever had, if you have ever lied and caused my relationships to break up, if you have ever been fake in your love, you had an ulterior motive, I forgive all of you unconditionally. I now recognize that these experiences that I have seen in my life, that I may have done these exact things to you or others, and that, in fact, I was to experience them so that I can recognize my own karma, the karma of my ancestors. I now recognize that these experiences in this life have never been accidental, that everything had a purpose. And I deeply apologize for holding a grudge, anger, resentment, and blaming you for what has happened in my life. I wish to offer each and every one of you my unconditional forgiveness for whatever you may have done. I ask your forgiveness for not being aware enough to recognize that I may have actually harmed you first. Please forgive me if I have. I ask forgiveness to all souls that I have blamed, that have done things that have brought harm or suffering to my heart, to my love. And I ask your unconditional forgiveness if I have done these same things to you or anything to you that has kept you from having love. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And so now take a minute. Truly go inside your heart. Think of those one or two people you've had the greatest difficulty forgiving. Recognize that it is not a one life experience that the law of cause and effect, the law of karma brings to us those things that we may have done to others. And even if we never hurt that person the way they have hurt us, do you really want to be the person doing it to them next time around? Do you want to get stuck in the cycle of karma? Who you or them will wake up first and how many lifetimes will it take? Choose instead to forgive now, fully and completely, without any attachments, so that you can open yourself more fully to the love that is already waiting for you. I will continue to hum while you have this private conversation with all those that you need to forgive. Now bow your head with gratitude to your beloved Creator, to all of the souls that have come that have said thank you for your forgiveness. Some of them you actually need to ask forgiveness because they were just reminding you. Some of them 
They are grateful to receive your forgiveness, for they know that it will save them many lifetimes of suffering. In every case, your heart is now much, much, much more open to receive the love that is waiting for you. The third forgiveness, the most important forgiveness, is the forgiveness of self. Please repeat after me. Dear my beloved soul, could you please come? Dear the soul of all of the thoughts that I have ever had about myself that have been judgmental, critical, blaming, guilt-oriented, all the thoughts that I have ever had about myself, about not being good enough, smart enough, thin enough, fat enough, pretty enough, ugly enough, all the thoughts I've ever had about myself that were abusive, non-supportive, aggressive, all the thoughts I've ever had about myself that were not honoring and respectful. All of these souls, please come. I wish to sincerely apologize to myself, to my soul, and to all of these thought forms. I know that each of you as thought forms did not come to me accidentally. The reason I might have a thought form that I am not worthy enough is because maybe I or my ancestors communicated to others that they are not worthy enough. I may have said to others, you are not pretty. I may have said to others, you are fat. I may have said some very unpleasant things to others, and that could be why I have such unpleasant thoughts to self. I wish most humbly to apologize to all the souls in all time if I or my ancestors have communicated to any of you in an abusive manner in a manner that caused you to feel unworthy, unlovable, not pretty, not sexy, not worthy, not financially sound, not smart enough. Maybe I said you were stupid or a dummy. Whatever we have done to bring down your lack of self-love, lack of self-value, there is simply no excuse. I am not the kind of person today that would say those kinds of unpleasant things, and I am doing better to watch my thoughts, words, and actions. I know that to all of these souls that I have harmed, that it is not enough to just say, I am sorry. I recognize now that I have experienced many of these negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, and I now comprehend that it is my karma that has brought them to me. So I ask most sincerely for all of the souls that I and my ancestors have harmed in this way to recognize my awakening, my request for your forgiveness, and if you have harmed me by delivering these negative thoughts to me, these negative things that have caused me to have low self-esteem. I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness. I wish to release each and every one of you souls from any spiritual debt you may have to me <clears throat> and ask your forgiveness for having had this unpleasant form of communication to you. Thank you, my beloved soul, for assisting me to be a happier, healthier soul and for moving forward in life 
choosing not to judge others, not to be critical of others, to avoid saying or thinking unpleasant things about others. For now I see the ramifications of these very unpleasant thoughts, words, and actions. I ask forgiveness to all of these souls and to my own soul for making these choices. I love myself. I am a worthy. I am a spark of my beloved original creator. I am a spark of original love. And now I no, I am worthy of that original love. So now take a minute. See that by offering the forgiveness, asking for forgiveness, releasing the self-judgments, criticisms, and everything else that you created from your karma. Now the divine, the water of love is in front of you. The pathway is much clearer now. The debris that has kept you from aligning to the love in your heart, aligning to the love that has always been there inside of you, not outside of you, can now be seen. So now take a minute or two, walk to God, walk to your Creator, to whoever you believe, walk to that light being and align to that love for this is the three steps to opening to love Now gently bow your head, bow your head to your own soul and bow your head to all of the souls that have offered you their unconditional forgiveness. Bow your head to all of the souls that have not offered you their unconditional forgiveness for they do not believe you yet. You must do this practice consistently from the pure heart. And this is what opens your heart to receive the love that you deserve. This is what removes the blockages that will allow you to align to that higher frequency of the love that you deserve. This is what clears the spiritual debts that have been inhibiting you from receiving the love that you so deserve. Let us bow our heads to divine Tao, source, creator, all the beings of light. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So please take a moment to share how this uh, practice was for you, what your experience was, anybody with third eye, what did they see? Take this time to share. Sometimes some people won't share, but the ones that do share, the people that did not share will go, yeah, I had that experience too. Welcome, Catherine. Welcome, Sue Ann Machal. Welcome also, Cherry Picard. And welcome, Christina Walker. Welcome, Christina uh, Thorson. And welcome Richard Rogers. Aloha, I'm Adrade. <clears throat> and welcome Richard Amodio. And so Joyce says, I saw a lot of souls ready to be forgiven and ready to receive forgiveness. It was beautiful. Yeah, I tell you, many, many souls line up 
they are happy to forgive. You know, they have their soul journey to move on with. You think they want to be bogged down by this karma? They don't. They just uh, need to know that the understanding has been comprehended, that the lessons have been learned. So many souls are happy to release. Very deep, many tears, great releasement, says Vanessa. Katie saw Source as a turtle. I was told, you always have my love with you wherever you go. You are always home. Buckets of tears, says Ilona. Uh, and Kristen Strachan, the whole self-talk and worry thing resonates. Uh, she still has a way to go. Kathy Arnold, so powerful, cried most of the time, feels so much freer now. He feels forgiven. Yeah, very powerful forgiveness. It was a very good one. One to definitely do again and again. Um, so, you know, earmark this live stream. Uh, it has a URL. At either now or at the end, you can right click on the video and it actually gives you the video URL. <clears throat> and so you can come back to it again and again. Just scroll to the part where I actually do the practice. You do it again and again and again. Go deeper, deeper, deeper. You're going to feel lighter, lighter, lighter. You have to understand, this is how love gets attracted. We attract at the level of our frequency. What inhibits us from receiving the love we so much desire is always searching outside. And when we clear the karma blockages, align our heart to our divine's heart, keep that the focus, then we are raising our frequencies and then we only attract to us those souls that are of the greatest alignment to us. But until we have the eye on the source, until we align our, our heart and soul to the source, there is, there is just going to be more of what we don't want. And so the forgiveness of self, the forgiveness, asking forgiveness, offering forgiveness, the combination of all three, open the path and allow us to receive the love that has always been there. Source is always blessing us with 100% love. But we are too busy being outside. Let us go inside more. Align there. Then when that one comes, if you're looking for uh, true love, then uh, you will have a much greater opportunity of alignment and keeping that love. And do not look for them to fulfill you. That's the other big mistake. Always keep your eye on the source. These, these other souls into your life that bring love into your life, they need to have their eye on the source. If both your eyes are on the source, then you'll be a great match. If your eyes are expecting each other to fulfill each other, it's a problem waiting to happen. So you can learn more if you want to get my Soulmate Attraction a book. I have a, a soulmate attraction karma book. This this whole teaching was not on soulmate. Uh, it's just about you know aligning to love. But for those that are in that market, um, go to my website. It's at the bottom of the home page. It's only like thirteen dollars. Okay. So Catherine says, Aloha, Master Paul, and everyone. Uh, I can in the end of the practice and saw an enormous amount of light, many golden balls floating up to heaven to assist in the transformation. Uh, thank. And she also saw. Um, big green leaves falling from the sky. I've never seen that before. That is curious, huh? I wonder what the leaves were. Oh, the message I'm getting in the leaves, the leaves are new growth. <laughs> the leaves are new growth. That's what they represent. Um, Larissa Rood says, Thank you, Master Paul. She had great clearing of tears, cleansing and release, and deepest gratitude. Johnny says, Wow, felt a very powerful practice, was left in tears, felt a lot of blockages. We'll definitely review the live stream. Some of you, uh, looks like you lost your signal and came back. Judy says, such a deep, deep experience for her. Tears flowing freely, many deep connections to many souls. Shelly, she believes she had a better understanding and cried through the whole forgiveness practice. As she did the practice, she saw bright, warm light. Many souls gathering, lots of forgiveness back and forth. And uh, at the end, she saw the eye. Uh, like the eye in the sky, the eye, always sees surrounded by great light and love. She's very grateful. Okay. And then Sherry Picard, uh, she missed it so much she wants to see this again. Love you for doing this. Uh, you're very welcome. 
Okay, so thank you all for sharing. Larissa, such a powerful, blessed practice, feeling many blockages this morning around unworthy and living judgments from self. So this should help you a lot. Almost, almost all humanity has self-worth issues. They fail to recognize there's a karmic undertone to it. If we have these experiences, we have caused those upon other. Let us take that responsibility, do our practices, and help release those unpleasant thoughts, okay? So for those that came in late, I tell you, I'm impressed with the wisdom that came through today. This was a good one. This is one that I'll probably be earmarking and putting on my website uh, because it was that good. So thank you, heaven, for borrowing my mouth and serving all of these beautiful souls. I encourage anyone who didn't watch this from the beginning to watch it from the beginning. And um, also make sure you share. I do uh, have this in podcast form for some of you that just can't make it live all the time. Uh, you can find more. Again, just go to my website. Uh, on the first page, you'll see information how to get to the podcast. It's under my blog, so just go to my blog. Um, and they're a week late, you know, because I finished the live streams and then turned the video into an audio. It's a process, but it is a way to keep in touch on a consistent basis. And you can also go and, and hear the ones from the past that way, you know, keep it in your ear. So um, if you have significant blockages in your life around love, I do special services that can release the karmic blockages much, much faster. Um, it's kind of like what you experienced today times 100. Uh, and uh, yes, there's a small honor fee for that because heaven releases a lot of virtue to offset the spiritual debts, which is in essence what you did today. You offset spiritual debts through forgiveness. So it can also be released through virtue. And the services that I offer release massive amounts of virtue, which in essence go to your Akashic Record, clear the spiritual debts, and allow you to have a, a, a much better and happier life a little bit faster than you would be able to accomplish on your own. So if that's of interest to you, uh, you, can, you can get a hold of me through Facebook Messenger or call me. My information's on my website. And uh, Kristen Rojas is, is excellent uh, help here, and she usually puts my contact information in her, uh, in her comments as well, okay? So love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy your weekend. I will be back on Monday. Bye-bye, everybody.